So question 23 is about materials. And the first bit is, you know, again, an easy question, just put in the missing number. And what we see is that every time it goes up by uh, one, this goes up by 0.2. So if that's 1.8, that must be 1.6. So that's my first mark over there. Secondly, uh, draw the plot the data point corresponding to this value, which I did over here. So I've got that within half uh, a small square, easy marks to gain. And then draw the li line of best fit through all the data points. So all I did was I, I got my ruler, I, I put it on here and I drew my line of best fit. And again, that's an easy one mark that you can gain. The next bit, use this graph to determine the Young's modulus. So first we know that Young's modulus is equal to stress divided by strain, and that's equal to the gradient where you have this nice linear region over here. So I worked out my gradient. I drew in a triangle that effectively goes from this point down here, uh, and then I worked it out as that goes from 8 to 0, and that's 8 minus 0 times 10 to the 7, because we've got the stress given uh, in 10 to the 7 pascals over here. The strain is 10 to the minus 3, and you've always got to look at the graph and the units, because there'll always be something a little bit tricky there. And it goes from 0 up to 0 0.91 was what I, what I estimated for my graph. So I made, made a mistake the first time. The second time, uh, yeah, the gradient is equal to this over this, which is a value of 8.8 .8 times 10 to the 10. Uh, and this is appropriate, you know, two significant figures, and it's a very large number. We tend to find that the Young's modulus uh, tends to often be given in megapascals or often gigapascals. The next part of question 23 was about how you actually do the experiment. And this is something that you should have done or know about uh, in the course so far. So what they said is that there's been a zero error. Now a zero error is where you basically record uh, a reading uh, when effectively when, when the device is held at zero, it's still, it's still giving a reading. So what I've said is that, uh, okay, this is my, you need to kind of tidy this up slightly. Um, the experimental value they got for the diameter of the wire was too big. This means then that the area, which is equal to pi d squared over 4, or pi r squared, this means that they overestimated the area of the wire as well. When it came to looking at the stress, stress is equal to force divided by area, and if the value of the area was too big, this means the value of the stress was too small. And because Young's modulus is equal to the ratio of stress over strain, and strain isn't affected by this reading, if the value of stress was too small, then the value of Young's modulus they got from the experiment was too small. And so basically I've done my step-by-step -step thing, thinking about how this links back to some equations. And therefore, uh, his experimental value, um, okay, so the person here, uh, their experimental value was smaller than the real value. So basically you get uh, one mark for stating that, and maybe a couple of marks for having a logical argument of what's happening to the, to the readings as we go through. And that's question 23. Thank you.